Why, 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 why am I doing this? After everything I've said about having enough time in the air to enjoy a flight so you really get the value of it, I come out with this? Yep. I'm doing this again against my wallet's will so you guys don't have to waste your own cash. Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Andrew and welcome back to Andrew's Aviation, where today we will be continuing our luxury journey to Grand Rapids from Chicago with American Airlines. And I know, you guys might be wondering, why Grand Rapids? What's going on down there? Well, like I said in the first video of this trip, I'm just a guy heading home for the holidays. Don't know if me releasing this video in February counts as slacking cause all I did was do nothing and play Minecraft for a month, but I digress. Anyways, for this trip we'll be flying in first class on a CRJ700. I've never flown in first on a short flight before, and even though we probably won't get a chance to do much, I'll still make the most of it, so let's go! Who doesn't love connecting through Chicago O'Hare? It's only one of the most crowded, busiest, and largest airports in the country. It's probably obvious that most passengers have a connection here, and that some are just flying through here for a bite of some famous deep dish pizza. I wish I could get a large pie myself, but my flight was boarding in 20 minutes because of a delay from my previous flight, and I had to run straight to my gate. That also means I didn't get a chance to visit the lounge, but it's not like I was missing out on anything. Passengers with domestic first class tickets on American don't have free lounge access, and it costs 59 bucks to get in. You're only allowed to enter for free on a domestic ticket if you've joined one of their expensive credit card programs or have elite status. That is of course excluding American's qualifying transcontinental routes with high demand and large aircraft. Well, I'm not one to give someone $60 with only enough time to eat one sandwich, so I'll have to pass up this opportunity. So what to do for 20 minutes while I wait? Be a total weeb and watch anime, of course. The one I'm watching now is Initial D, and I absolutely love it. If you guys have a favorite anime, let me know down in the comments. When boarding finally started, I just finished my episode and I got to be the first one on board. I just thought that was really cool, it's not every day you get to be the first passenger on a plane. But since now we're on board before anyone else, it gives us the perfect time to start checking out our big comfy first class seat. It's pretty obvious that these seats are much wider and have a lot more legroom compared to those in economy, but of course on a cramped CRJ we're not given record breaking dimensions. The seat measures 21 inches of width and only 37 inches of pitch. Even though 6 inches is a lot of extra length, it's on the short side of seat pitch for first class seats. For example, on Americans new A321s, they have 39 inches of pitch in first class. And that's generally the trend as the aircraft get bigger, then the seat pitch gets larger. But there's still more to this seat than just legroom. To the side of the shared armrest we have a small space for drinks and snacks, and a little compartment for the foldable tray table. Speaking of drinks, as the rest of the passengers were still boarding, our flight attendant served us our pre-departure beverages. The choices were only between soda, water, and coffee though. Still, it was a nice touch. Once the service was over, it was a quick taxi to the runway and we were on our way to Grand Rapids. Like I said in the beginning, this flight is super short, and the city of Grand Rapids is only 45 minutes away by plane, so I didn't have that many expectations for the service. We did get a few amenities and services provided to us though. Everyone in first class has a complimentary paper thin blanket provided to them, except I don't think anyone actually used them on this flight. Sure they're great for sleeping and playing hide and seek, but not for less than an hour in the air. A second drink service was also provided, but only to first class passengers. The choices were basically the same as on the ground, so this is the second coke I've had in the past hour. But don't worry about me, I'm still within the legal limit. After drinks, I thought there would be a short snack service, but it never came. After crying for 5 minutes, I remembered that I came prepared with some of my own snacks. Typically in first class you can expect some sort of service, but this flight was one of those times where even with this kind of ticket you don't get much. One thing you do get a lot of, however, compared to the other economy passengers, is overhead bin space and space under your seat. There's lots of room to move your feet around and you can put your bag just about anywhere, and still have enough space to feel comfortable in my opinion. So if you want to fill your bag with your pet rocks and make sure that they stay safe during your flight, then you're in luck. Now, if you want to talk about entertainment on this flight, I mean other than taking care of your pet rocks, American has a website with free movies and TV shows on it, but no matter how many times I refreshed the page, I couldn't get it to load on my computer. And when the website finally did start to work, it was almost time to start descending. Having to resort to my own fun, I still couldn't watch any more anime because Wi-Fi wasn't free on this flight. On larger aircraft, first and business class passengers will have free Wi-Fi access, but that wasn't the case today, obviously. The best thing to do here was just to spread out, finish my coke, and enjoy the beautiful foggy views of cloud as we descended into Grand Rapids.
In the end, I personally enjoyed this flight, but I kind of enjoyed it in a weird way. Like, have you ever had a meal that was like super good? Imagine only getting to have one bite of that dish and then it's over. The waitstaff takes away your plate and you're politely asked to leave. That's pretty much what this short flight was like. I enjoyed the bite I had, but I wish I was able to have more. That short amount of time to enjoy yourself is part of the reason why the CRJ isn't defined as a luxury aircraft in the airline world. There have been a couple times where I've flown short routes on the CRJ on other airlines with a higher sense of quality, but they are nothing compared to some of the larger aircraft on other 5-star airlines. Am I saying American isn't quality? No. Am I saying that there's carriers out there that have better service with what they're given? Yes. If you were to ask me whether I'd do this again or if I'd recommend others to do it, I'd say that your cash is better spent buying expensive airport food than paying for an upgrade that didn't make too much of a difference. If you happen to need extra legroom and overhead bin space and you're considering a first class seat, I'd advise you to look at main cabin extra first and if that doesn't meet your standards, go ahead and book first class. Then afterwards you can brag to all your friends that you've flown in first. And when they ask you if it was worth it, just say yes so that they can go through the same experience of betraying their wallet like I did. So that's my view on all this. What did you guys think of Americans first class in their CRJs? Have any of you out there ever flown in first on American or have any upcoming flights? Let me know down in the comments below. Well, that's it for me. I'm gonna go stop at Walmart to pick up some snacks, then binge watch The Office on Netflix for the rest of the day. If you liked the video, pound that like button and subscribe to Andrew's Aviation for more videos. And as always, have a wonderful day everyone.